Guys, what is going on? I hope everyone's doing well. This video today, a little bit different than what we usually do, but this was actually a fantastic idea brought to me by um, one of my coaching clients, Brandon. I didn't forget about you, brother. This is a, a great idea that you had. So guys, what I wanna do today is I wanna walk you through how to look for properties online, okay? A lot of times people get really, really hung up in what to look for in regards to how they're finding property. And what I mean by that is a lot of people get hung up in the off-market deals or uh, they they get hung up talking to wholesalers or stuck in Facebook uh, real estate groups. One of our best ways to find property is always going to be getting properties that are on the MLS, listed properties, dealing with agents, and not dealing with a lot of the BS that a lot of other uh, people might be selling us. So uh, a really good way to do this, guys, is, is dealing uh, with MLS properties. Now, with that being said, let's talk a little bit about how to look for properties, where to look for properties, and what to do. So I'm going to choose a market where I have a lot of clients who are active and who do really, really well. Uh, and, and we're going to start out uh, in Akron, Ohio. Okay. So I'm going to literally walk you guys through exactly how I personally would look for property in Akron, Ohio. Now, keep in mind, your budget might be a little bit different. The things that you look for might be a little bit different, but we're going to go through a couple properties, kind of walk through them, and I'm going to show you what I am going to be looking at, okay? How I am going to look at these properties. And the cool thing about this is you're going to be able to be looking at my screen the whole time as we walk through it. So everything that I really, really do when it comes to looking at property is what we're going to be doing, which is pretty cool. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open Zillow and I am going to type in Akron, Ohio. Okay. Now the crazy thing that comes up and what overwhelms a lot of you guys when you first start looking for property, and I don't care if you're looking for property in California, Texas, uh, Wyoming, Florida, or Maine, right? we're going to be overwhelmed with listings when we first type this in. So as you can see, there are 558 agent listings active on Zillow in just this Akron area. Now, other listings, these are listings that are for sale by owners most of the time, okay? So they're not they don't have representation meaning a lot of times the seller of these properties does not want uh to to have an agent representative. Now, they want to try and save money, right? So real estate agents, the, the selling agent is going, to, is, is going to charge anywhere between 5 and 6%. And a common misconception is that a buyer will have to pay their representation. That is not true. The seller pays the commissions of both the buyer's agent and the seller's agent. So good to know, okay? Now, for a lot of sellers that want to avoid that, they go for for sale by owner because they don't want to have to pay an agent. So they do all their own marketing. They field all their offers themselves. Now, I don't always suggest that because if you're a first-time investor in real estate, you don't know what contracts you have to sign. You don't know what title work you need. You don't know what kind of insurance you need, title insurance, uh, if you're buying it in cash. It just can be uh, a lot harder uh, to do. So let's stick with agent listings, okay? Now, when it comes to Akron, I'm going to start up here at the top, guys, and you guys can see my cursor, okay? So I'm going to start with price number one. So for instance, my budget might be $15,000, okay, all the way up to $95,000, all right? So boom, as you can see, we just eliminated about 300 active listings, which is great because when we're looking for real estate, we want to always make sure that we trim the list of, of potential properties for us down to things that are going to only be good options. We don't want to look at 500 or 600 listings, take hours and hours and hours if they're not going to suit us, right? If they're not going to be good for us. So now I'm going to go over to bedrooms and bathrooms. Now, when we talk about Section 8, if that's what we're looking for here, we know right away we want bedrooms. Now, we don't want one-bedroom units, so let's do two-bedroom minimums, okay? Immediately, that just... Uh, 
erased more listings, okay? Now, of course, we need a bathroom, any bathrooms, right? We can do one plus, of course. I, I don't think many places um, have less than one bathroom, but scary, I just actually did see one unit that was erased. If you look at the map on the left, okay, you can see how all of a sudden we hit any. One just popped up right here, right around this area. And then if we do one bathroom, it just disappeared. So that is kind of scary. So good thing we did do that. Okay, that can save us time. Now, home type. And, and this is an, an area where a lot of people don't really know what they're doing. Okay. Now, as a first time home buyer, we don't want condos. Check that off the list. We don't want HOAs, okay? We don't want to deal with that. Because we put our, our value search up here, our price search really low, 15,000, we might get some lots and land that come up that are buildable. That's not going to help us, especially right now when we're talking about building for between 175 and, and, and 280 dollars per square foot. So that's not going to make a lot of sense. So let's erase that. Okay, that didn't do much. Now, manufactured homes, trailers, um, any kind of manufactured home, we don't want to do that either, okay? So let's get rid of that. Now, let's say for argument's sake, we're looking only at uh, some maybe small multifamily and some homes. Now, a lot of times, apartments, we're going to take that off the list. And with townhomes, we're going to erase that too because a lot of times with townhomes, we're having to pay HOAs. We don't want to pay HOA fees, okay, guys? So let's take that off the list as well. So what we just did in essence is narrow our list down to houses and multifamily, okay? Now, more. More is, is how we dive in uh, on kind of a, uh, a deeper level here, okay? So we can do square footage minimums and maximums, lot size, which really doesn't matter. Now, square footage could matter depending on what you're looking for. The years built, which definitely matters in, in some cases. Basements, depending on where you're looking at, could totally matter, okay? Amenities, not as much. Views, definitely not as much. Keywords. Now, keywords is something I use all the time when trying to find units, whether they're occupied or not occupied. If I wanted tenants, maybe I would search tenants in here. Okay, you guys can see some of my previous search, rent or occupied, tenants, right? Things that I've typed in in the past. So those are good ways and what that'll do is if you type keywords in, it'll factor out all of the properties that don't have those keywords in their descriptions, okay? But for now, we're not gonna do that. We wanna find us a nice vacant house, okay? So as you guys can see, after putting in all of our um, prerequisites, we have narrowed our list down essentially to 164 agent listings. We're only gonna focus on those right now, but we're down about 400 units, okay? That's why using filters is so helpful to us. It can save us plenty of time. So let's just go through, I wanna show you guys what I'm looking at when I see these things, okay? So I'm gonna hit the first one, $24,646. Wow, absolutely amazing. Just just came on market. So the first thing I'm gonna look at, guys, is if there's a significant amount of pictures of interior and exterior. If there are, great, because it's gonna allow me to see inside the unit to the exterior of the unit. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of things that are gonna be hidden from me. Now, of course, there might be, but at least I'll be able to get a more accurate picture if there are multiple photos of the unit in the listing. If I open this up and this picture right here was the only picture, I'd probably just X out and go to the next one. I need to see multiple exterior photos and interior photos because I need to have an idea if the rehab is gonna be within my budget, okay? So the first thing I see here, guys, I wanna look at the exterior and I wanna look at the roof and the windows, okay? And of course the yard. I don't see any issues with the yard. This walkway is a little janky, but I'm not worried about it at all. And I'm thinking uh, about this stuff in terms of a Section 8 inspection, what we would have to take care of, and also what kind of rehab would we need to do to make this tenant uh, stay in our unit for a long time. So the first things that stick out to me immediately, guys, and if you follow my mouse here, you'll see this right here, and you, this right here, and this right here, okay? Major discoloration. Now, that is because it rained probably in the, the day or two prior or even the morning of when this picture was taken of the unit, okay? So we understand that water is hitting this area here and this area here and this area here. 
at a, a level that is not uh, the same as it's hitting up here, okay? Or in some of these other areas that aren't as uh, dark. Now, you'll also see a green discoloration down here and green discoloration down here. Now, that is algae, meaning that there is significant water that has built up here over the course of a long time because of poor drainage. Now, it could be a couple things. It could be bad runoff, which definitely has. As you can tell right here, it has a gutter. It's got no downspout. So any water that's hitting this roof is going into the gutter system, going down here and just pooling right here, which can cause a lot of issues, especially because there's not enough pitch in between here. A lot of times what you'll have is you'll have water running back into the house this way, which will create issues. That's number one. Number two, there's no gutter system here. Water that hits this face is all just going to run down okay, and pool here. We could have issues right there behind all this stone that could, could be a, a deeper issue, okay? Also, guys, something that I'm looking at here is the roof. So as I look at the roof, I see major issues right here with this gutter. It's filled with leaves, meaning a lot of the water that's probably coming down here has nowhere to go. So it's either overflowing, it's getting shot down here and running down this side right here, which could uh, be the reason for this uh, water, uh, excessive water damage here, or it could be getting pushed back up and running down this side of the house, which it's most likely doing here as well, and creating all this moisture here. So it's going to create a lot of issues for us guys, not only with the actual exterior, but when you have dams like this of leaves, a lot of times the water hits the roof, it has nowhere to go but in. So it can go through those leaves and sit on those shingles get underneath the shingles, create rot in the decking in the roof, or it gets sent elsewhere, right? So <clears throat> even right here, we have more buildup of leaves, meaning all this stuff could be here and, and get stuck up in here, get hung up in here and, and end up down here. So when you look at this, immediately I say, okay, I'd probably have to put a new roof on this. I don't know how long that this stuff has been here. I don't see any evidence of, of extreme damage, all I see is the fact that no one's been taking care of this roof and it could be bad. So that's in the back of my mind, all right? There's also an electrical meter right here, which is not good considering all this water is getting soaked over it. Uh, there's an electrical wire that runs here. If you guys look, you know, I'm gonna try and zoom in here, but there's an electrical wire that runs this way and runs into this meter box, okay? If we have water coming down here, this could cause a significant issue and can cause uh, this line to burn up, which we definitely do not want. I've seen plenty of electrical fires start that way because of uh, poor uh, water coming off the roof and, and having it not be sent away for the house, from the house correctly. So a lot of stuff there, guys, just in picture number one, but the, this is how I want you to start analyzing homes. So let's scroll down. Photo number two and photo number three, we have a, another picture here of this roof. And again, what we see here is significant damming. This would be a huge issue. I would almost guarantee you that this house would need a new roof. House to the right looks good. House to the left looks pretty good. I don't see any other issues here that we haven't already discussed. There is a gutter here that we couldn't see in that other photo. But my guess is because of the leaves that are even encroaching right here over the side of the gutter is that this water's coming down here overflowing, overdoing this gutter um, and, and creating just a lot of moisture here, similar to on this side. Let's go to the next photo. We have another exterior photo shows a little bit more of, of this algae issue right here. If I were to buy this house, I'd probably have to reseal this stone. I'm sure that it's it's pretty bad moisture wise. I'd also cut leaves on this uh, on this tree, branches on this tree off that are directly over the house because if you can see, I mean there are big huge uh, sticks that are falling off this tree. Every time a stick falls, when those leaves go to fall, they're going to get tied up in the sticks and then when it rains, the water is going to have nowhere to go. So the roof is not functioning properly because of the trees that are over it. So that's something that I would definitely try to adjust. Again, guys, more uh, exterior photos. Uh, outside of that, the bones look pretty good. The windows don't look terrible uh, and, and everything else looks pretty good aside from that, okay? Here's the side yard. 
we'd have to get rid of a lot of this rubble when it comes to and debris for section eight. This could be the backyard. Um, that's what it looks like. I don't think it's the side of the house. This is the backyard. So good size backyard. Um, you guys see how many leaves are on the ground. Definitely important to take that into consideration because the leaves have to go somewhere. And if they're going on the roof and into our gutters, that's going to be an expense that we're going to have to think about in the future. Okay. Next photo. Okay, guys. So here is a really, really good picture of everything that I've been talking about and, and, you can see how bad the algae is on the back of the house. And this is a really, really good photo because it shows exactly what the water is doing. You guys can always backtrack and see what's happening with water based on the impressions it leaves on the homes. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Now, this is the back side of the house. So the water is hitting the back side of this house. It's going down here. We can see that there's significant damage around this pipe right here, around this vent right here, okay, you can see that uh, there's significant lipping in the top of this roof, which makes me think even more, we're gonna need a new roof, okay? Water is coming down here, it's getting stuck in this gutter, and look at where the downspout is to this gutter, guys. That's a, a terrible problem, because what's happening is, the water gets stuck in this gutter. Now, this gutter is so dirty, water's overflowing, same issues we saw in the front half of the house, but in this case, water that is coming into the gutter is coming out this downspout. This downspout should come all the way down here and have a kick out on it, okay? It should pull up over here away from the house. It's not doing that. So instead, it's kicking water straight down the house. And as you can tell, you can see exactly where the water damage is and where it's really, really bad because of the darkness. So it's running literally, I bet you, that when it rains at this house, it looks like a faucet is pouring down the back of this house. All it's doing, guys, is ruining and damaging the back of this house. Not only that, see these gaps under the home? You can tell that the water damage is so significant that when it runs off the back of this house, it has nowhere to go. It's doing exactly what we talked about a couple minutes ago. It's going back underneath the house, which makes me think that there's probably pretty significant rotting underneath the house, over by the joists, in the crawl space, just a, uh, a big issue. So it's starting to, you know, the, the list price is all starting to make sense. Never forget the list price when you're looking at some of these things so you can tell a little bit about how they priced it and what you might run into. All right, so let's zoom out. We're going to go to our next photo. Again, everything that we just kind of talked about, another angle. Holy cow, and we see why it is worth 24,000. It might even be worth a little less than that, okay? So guys, when we talk about this, let's, let's look at this. What do we need to do here? We can see the foundation right here. We can see the stone foundation. We know water's coming in on the back of this house as it is. All, this, all these windows need to be replaced over here. We would need to uh, put all new flooring in, all new subflooring. We would need to reframe the entire house. It has no walls currently. We'd have to frame from, from uh, this load-bearing support to this load-bearing support, from this load-bearing support to this load-bearing support. Okay, so all new framing. We'd have to put all new sheetrock up. You have to re-insulate the whole house. There's no insulation anywhere to be found. It needs all new windows. It needs uh, insulation in the attic. I don't see any insulation in the ceiling as well. So we'd have to hang drywall. That is a gigantic job, guys. This house has been completely demoed. Again, let's look over here. We have some... Um, Look, we have electrical uh, outlets that are hanging. We have electrical wires that need to be corrected. This whole window needs to be taken out. We have rot underneath that window. So, and you can see uh, evidence of rot on the window. So the water's coming off that house and it's coming right down this window and it's coming right under the sill, which is kind of what we thought. This wood all looks pretty healthy. That wood under there, you can see the darkness and the rot there. So we know that the water's pouring down and that's at the front of the house. So we see that the water's pouring down and just kind of rotting all this stuff out. Issues here, guys, as well with some of these ceilings. You can see how, how these uh, pieces of wood are sagging if you follow these pieces of wood. Guys, we're talking about a full reconstruction right here. You can see pieces of the drywall ceiling that they ripped up. Not really sure why they gutted this thing totally, but it would make me think that there is significant water coming in 
uh, on the ceiling as well. Okay, guys, keep in mind, I haven't seen any of these houses before I made this video. So everything I see, I'm just going to call out as I see it. And this is the process that I take when I look at any single home, whether I look at it on the West Coast, on the East Coast, down South or up North. This is how I look at every single home. So as we go through here, guys, we can tell, I mean, it's just a disaster. This would be uh, probably somewhere between, it's 904 square feet. Probably you're looking at to rebuild this with electrical and plumbing, do this the right way. You're probably looking at about 90 to 100,000 in just rehab um, just to do it all right. It's going to need a new roof. It needs all new interior. It needs literally everything, full insulation. It needs absolutely everything. So I'm, I'm thinking somewhere between 90 and 100K, which, which obviously is, is a little absurd. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, assuming that the structural integrity is, is there. Otherwise, it's a teardown and, and we're just maybe rebuilding on this house. Okay, nothing of significance here. Uh, again, you see the, the, the water damage here. We have a vine growing up the side of the house. Uh, so, so no good there. Okay. Again, we have rotting around this entire window. Water's coming down this way and, and seeping into the house. So guys, no good on this one. Okay. And that's fine. So let's X out. Boom. No problem. Let's X out of it. Let's see what else is available here in Akron. Okay. Let's scroll down. Let's see what this house is talking about for 30,000. All right, we have a four bedroom, two bath. Let's see what we got. Okay, so first off, guys, let's look at this thing. First thing that I look at when I look at this house is the roof, number one. This house is definitely going to need a new roof. You guys can see that there's significant changes in the color of the roof. You see that there is, is a lot of debris on the roof. The gutter system is a disaster right here. It's a mess. We have pieces of the roof that are missing right here. It looks like it's been folded upwards. No good, no good, no good. I haven't looked at any of these pictures, but, but I would be willing to bet that there is water damage in the attic or in the upstairs of this house um, in, in certain spots, okay? Now, one thing good going for this house is this would be kind of a cheap roof to do um, because it's very simple. You have a roof here, a roof here, and a roof on the back with a good pitch. So normally, if there wasn't debris on the roof, rain would hit it and flow off pretty quickly. When you have a, a pitch like this, you usually don't have as many issues because it's, it's pretty steep. But in this case, the water has nowhere to go. It's hanging up on all these leaves and, and, and pine needles. So that's always going to be and, and create a problem for us. All right. Another thing I'm going to look at, guys, I'm going to look at the quality of the shaker right here. We have some damage here as well. This uh, piece right here doesn't look great. We'd have to fill this crawl space in um, and get the debris away from the side of the house. But otherwise, the landscaping looks pretty good. No issues with that at all there. Okay, let's look at the interior. So the wall looks pretty good. I don't see any problems here. Remember, guys, it's not always what you see. It's what you don't see. Okay, so we take everything here with a grain of salt, but it gives us an idea of what kind of general condition the units are in. So looking here, I, I, the wall looks fine. Of course, there's a lot of furniture and, and, and junk in the house that we would have to remove. Here as well, uh, walls look pretty good. I don't see any significant sagging here. Now, if you look at this, guys, sometimes when you look at uh, the molding around some of these openings, if it's sagging like this, you know that there's pressure coming in on, on the roof. It could be the shifting of the foundation. That can be an issue. I look at the outlets, I see two prong, meaning that this room is not grounded, okay? Significant as we move forward in the house. To look at that outlet uh, as we move forward, we know that this room is not grounded and that looks like a two prong outlet there as well. So good to keep in the back of your mind. All right, let's move on. Okay, so here, uh, again, walls look like they are, are in good shape. The drywall doesn't look too terrible or too beat up. The flooring doesn't look that bad either. Just some junk we would have to get rid of. Okay, old school vent, but at least it has some kind of ventilation system. Maybe it has an HVAC. I didn't see one on the on the first photo that we that we saw of the exterior, but but looks pretty good. Okay, flooring in the kitchen looks like it might need to be replaced. All right, into the kitchen we go. Cabinets look operable. Not a problem, okay? It's old, obviously, and, and beat up a little bit. Dirty, you see some 
some dirtiness around the, the handles here around these knobs, but absolutely nothing that is, uh, you know, bumping out to me. I do see some right here. I do see some daylight coming through that door. That would have to be corrected before we put a Section 8 tenant in this unit. And definitely more, uh, more uh, you know, viewable here. We'd have to definitely correct that. I don't like this door. This door is disgusting. It's got dirt on it, or maybe that could be rust as well. This is a steel door. A lot of exterior doors, guys, they are made of steel, and if you don't take care of them the right way, they will start to rot. Um, this is going to be an issue because it's going to create water and moisture coming in, which could be one of the reasons why this door is starting to rust if that is what that is. Okay, guys, so in here, everything looks fine. It looks like there was a drywall repair at some point here, okay? This outlet right here is a three-prong outlet. That is some serious cause for concern. My guess would be <coughs> that uh, the house is two-prong, but in this instance right here, it's a three-prong outlet, meaning uh, we'd have to definitely check the grounds on that because I wouldn't believe that that's actually uh, the right outlet for this unit. We'd probably have to correct that. But otherwise, we'd have to repaint this to make it look good because that looks pretty terrible there with that sheetrock replacement. We'd repaint this, uh, and um, otherwise, this wall looks pretty good, and, and everything looks pretty good in here. Maybe put a new floor in here because that floor is kind of ugly for what looks like a bedroom. Uh, we want to make sure that the person living in this in this unit is comfortable, and that's a pretty ugly floor. Okay, guys, bathroom. Uh, looks like a new window, first thing I noticed. New window in here. Can't really tell the vanity. Uh, whoever it was missed the sink when they were spitting their uh, toothpaste in there, okay? That's okay, no problem at all. I can't really tell the vanity there. Maybe there's a different angle. Yeah, there is. Okay, well, that's uh, pretty terrible. Vanity is kind of crooked. It looks like it's coming up. We'd rip this entire vanity out, okay? The window looks good in here. For Section 8, guys, you need a operating vent on the ceiling or an operating window, all right? So it has our window. It's a brand new, what looks like aluminum window. Could be a vinyl window, but looks like aluminum to me. Um, so that looks good there. This is a broken mirror. We'd have to replace this. I would say replace this, replace this, put a new toilet in here. There's a GFI outlet right here, which is what you will need because it's in close proximity to water. Anytime you have a G you have an outlet that is within a couple feet of a water source, it needs to be GFI, meaning if there was ever a surge uh, of electricity to this outlet, it would immediately shut it off and kick it off so you didn't get electrocuted and, and there wasn't a high surge of electricity near the water source, okay? So what we would do, if this was my house, I'd rip this disgusting thing off the wall, repaint all of this, this is terrible, um, update this uh, electrical um, face plate, move this down, that seems pretty high to me, I'd move it probably closer to here for a hand towel and take this whole vanity out, we replace this and, and put a new vanity in as well as a new toilet, okay? All right guys, bedroom, okay? Bedroom number two, I would guess. Looks pretty good, of course, trash and, and debris, we'd throw all that stuff out, uh, but everything looks pretty good in here. I don't obviously know how these windows are operating and the, and the quality of these windows, but everything else looks pretty good in here, so I like this room. All right, well, it seems that I was that I was right about one thing, you guys. Okay, look at the ceiling. We have some significant damage on the ceiling, some significant repair right here. I promise you I have not looked at any of these pictures before we did this. Not only here, but water damage on the floor that looked like it was pooling, so definitely needs a new roof. This is a very active leak. That's why looking at roofs is so important. That's the first thing I noticed. Second thing I noticed... Whoever put this floor down didn't know how to put in laminate plank flooring, okay? You see the, 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 the separations here. Um, if, usually if there are issues here, then there are issues in other parts of the room as well. We could try to re-snap this in, but remember, when you bring the floor this way, one inch, you're losing an inch here, you're losing an inch here. Now, what we can do is pull this transition strip up, bang in this laminate here, bang in the laminate there, and correct these, but you don't know the cause and effect. A lot of times when you do that, you'll create buckling in other parts of the room. So in this house, I'd probably just uh, put new flooring in. And this door, uh, little beat up here at the top, that has a hanger right there, but it looks like there is some kind of crack or deterioration there. So drywall repair in the ceiling, guys. Drywall repair in the ceiling here. Um, and 
new door and new floor here. Okay, active leak, always look at the floor and always look at the ceilings. Here's a different angle of it, guys. That was that water leak we looked at before. We're gonna need a new door right here as well. Um, active leak here in the ceiling. We need to put a smoke detector here. It was there at some point, don't know where it went. Kind of a strange layout. I'm not sure if this is a, uh, some kind of den or if this is another bedroom. All right, this is a little ugly. Okay, at one point, probably a nice little alcove. Hope there are no fish in there, please, Lord, because they're probably not doing too well. All right, I don't know why these are covered. That looks like it might have been a window unit at some time. Um, not really sure what's going on here as well, but guys, this is a pretty high window. Not quite sure if it would actually count as an egress, believe it or not, because it is so high off of the ground, there are new rules and new laws depending on where you buy that will that will basically say if the windows are too high off the ground, they're not gonna count as an egress, which as you can imagine, is a big problem, okay? Uh, right here, guys, we're looking at two more three-prong outlets, so uh, I'm definitely under the impression that uh, we are gonna have some ground issues here too. This is a disgusting vent not sure if it doesn't look like a return, but it could be a small return, meaning uh, when you do hair, heating and air conditioning, uh, all the air in the room is going to go into this vent and then come out in another vent, but that just looks like a floor vent to me. Okay, but definitely needs uh, some new uh, vent covers for sure. All right, so in here, um, same thing. We have some issues with the floor. Either that's a gap or that's a fork. Don't really know, um, but you know, obviously person living here, guys, wasn't very clean. They have dirty plates and, and nasty stuff here on the counter, um, but otherwise nothing uh, too of note here. Just throw all this junk and debris away. Same thing here, guys, looking at it, you know, kind of going through it quick, just a lot of junk. It looks like this door was was fixed at some point. We have to trash this door, put a new door on here. You can see kind of where it was replaced over right here. Bathroom, looking at it, this bathroom actually looks pretty good. Can't see the toilet here. Vanity looks okay. Um, little medicine holder here looks fine above the toilet. That looks all right. Don't know if that's damaged or if we'd be able to keep that or not. As long as there is a window in this unit, uh, in this uh, bathroom, or there is a vent, we'd be okay over here. Electrical panel. It does look pretty updated, guys, actually, okay? All the breakers uh, look like they're good. Now, of course, we can't tell the quality of a real breaker until we get behind it, okay? But the panel itself looks fairly new, and all the breakers look fairly new there, too. Okay, let's talk about the basement. We have our furnace right here. We have our water heater right here. It's a common misconception that water heaters need to be off the ground. They actually do not. This is a gas system, okay? It's a gas system. That is what I realized right away. How do I know it's gas? Well, when you think about it, see this vent right here? That is a vent that all the gas fumes are gonna go up and out, okay? Up and out. This furnace, very similar. It looks, a uh, I can't really tell because I can't see the innards of it, but it looks like there might be uh, some things missing on the inside. That would be a red flag to me. We'd have to get a, an HVAC guy out there to check the furnace, make sure that it is in fact um, up to par. But usually there should be a, a gate right here keeping this covered uh, so people can't go in and play with the innards of this, okay? Again, guys, this is also gas. You can see the gas pipes coming in right here. Again, right here, you can see gas. It's a gas, gas shutoff switch right there. We have gas coming in here as well. And you can always tell usually because a, on a gas water heater, they'll have a vent over it that'll suck up those bad fumes and kick them right out of the house, okay? And then guys, here's the exterior. Again, disaster of a gutter. Um, this gutter system definitely right here. That's not a good way to run a gutter system right there. Um, so of course, I'm sure there's a ton of water coming out there off of this system right here. Uh, the back of this house does not look good. We see moisture build up here. Obviously we know that this gutter system isn't working well. I would you know, go as far to say that this is, is, has some significant rot in it as well. 
Obviously this window looks terrible. You guys can tell that someone tried to do a kick out here with a lot of this water coming off of the gutter by putting this um, plastic tubing. And what they're doing is they're attaching it to the gutter so the water that comes off is in fact getting away from the house, being pushed away. But they're not doing too good of a job because there's a lot of overflow, which is the reason why there's a ton of moisture right here. And a lot of the water coming in here is spilling into this window, which is causing significant rotting. And guys, look at, you can see a little discoloration here in the shaker because water is literally pooling around this window, probably coming in there and then dripping down the side right here and, and creating a ton of moisture right there. So guys, on this, I would say new roof, probably looking at somewhere between nine and 12,000 on the new roof, putting um, a new deck off the back, probably looking at between 2,500 and 4,000 on that. I'm not gonna add it up. You guys can add it all up as I go. New gutter system right here on the entire house, probably looking somewhere between two and 3,500 for all new gutters and, and all new kickouts, uh, downspouts as well. All right, going through it quick. We need to have an HVAC servicing. Um, we would need uh, some paint in some rooms, some flooring in some rooms, maybe 5,000 for that stuff because we can save a lot of this floor. All new carpet in here. Uh, looking at, at, depending on the scale of carpet, looking at a couple thousand for the carpet, if that is the case. And then we're going to need to do all new drywall here on the ceiling, full drywall wall repair. And that's going to be short. That's going to be probably somewhere between 600 and um, probably uh, 1500, but just a small piece right here. Nothing crazy. This room looks good all new vanity and everything in here. You're talking definitely under a thousand dollars for the new toilet, new vanity and, and uh, new mirror in here. So that's really not that bad. Okay. Probably new flooring in here as well. Again, I included that in the carpet costs. Um, new door here, looking at about 800 for the new door and install a full cleaning trash removal, looking at about somewhere between a thousand and 2000 for the full trash removal, depending on how much there is on the inside. And a lot of ancillary small stuff, guys, that can add up. A lot of new vent covers, new door handles, new interior doors. We'll rip this carpet up, put new carpet in here as well. And then an electrician, of course, to come in and check these outlets, okay? Um, and, and obviously a resecure here and doing uh, our work here. But guys, on this, probably looking at somewhere between 25 and 45 all in, and that's of course depending on how much carpet we need, how much drywall we need, how much paint we need, and and what kind of roof we're going to put on this thing. Um, but I think that that's pretty conservative. Obviously, that's a pretty large um, discrepancy, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. So let's compare that, guys. Let's look at something that's a little bit more expensive, so maybe it doesn't need that much work. Okay, look for something that might be a little bit more turnkey. Uh, not this that multifamily because that obviously looks a little bit beat on the outside to start. Let's look at this 2-1, okay? 842 square feet, a little more expensive. First thing I notice here is that this looks good. This is a nice little ramp on the outside, nice little walkway. All right, we have good gutter system right here. The roof looks pretty healthy here. We have our nice downspout with an underground uh, downspout here, which means a lot of times what happens when you see this go underground, it's gonna kick this water out somewhere down here, which is really nice. That is a nice perk that I haven't seen on any of the other houses. So looks like somebody cares about this unit, all right? Inside, guys, we have original hardwoods. They look pretty good to me. I don't see anything immediate. Of course, it's very outdated, but that's okay. I don't see anything that needs to be done there. Of course, I would take these ceiling fans out right away, but the paint looks good, ceiling looks good, and it looks clean. Again, hardwood looks good here. All of the uh, window framing looks good. Door frames look good. Vents look good. Three prong outlets here. New face cover here. New face plates here and a new outlet. Older outlets, you guys can tell the face plate around it is new, but the outlets themselves are not. Backyard looks pretty good. Don't know what that is. It would have to get to the bottom of that and figure out what that is. Otherwise, it looks pretty good back here. Looks good here. Probably update this transition strip because it looks like it's coming up a little bit as we go from the hardwood in here to what looks to me like sheet flooring uh, in the kitchen. Carpet looks pretty good in this little photo. Again, we'd, we'd uh, change the light fixtures out right here. Carpet looks good. Hardwood looks good. 
It's got smoke detectors. Wow, that is really nice downstairs as well. Now with Section 8, guys, they, what they might make you do, uh, depending on which jurisdiction covers the voucher, is they might make you put uh, ceiling up right here. Okay, not not allowed to have any exposed electrical or exposed plumbing. You see there is exposed exposed plumbing right here and exposed electrical, but it would kind of just depend on the inspector and which jurisdiction would, would take this over. But really good. It looks like this basement was resealed recently. The floor looks good. The furnace right here looks pretty good as well. And that's it. So not a lot. We didn't get to see a lot, which makes me a little nervous. Okay, that looks to me like a bedroom. That looks to me like a bedroom. Um, maybe a little living space we're in here. Uh, dining space right here and a kitchen right there. It is only 842 square feet, so that could be the whole house. But guys, looks really good on a house like this, barring any electrical or plumbing work. Um, you know, we're talking about going in here, putting new smoke detectors in, putting new light fixtures in throughout the whole unit, maybe doing some drywall work if it needs it, some touch-up paint work if it needs it, removing this thing out back. You're talking just a couple thousand dollars worth of work, guys. New transition strip in here, taking this dishwasher out um, and, and, and doing that. One of the issues I have with this unit is when I go through it, I don't see a bathroom. That makes me uh, concerned. Um, I don't have a, a photo of the house from a distance. I'd like a picture from the street. That way I can see the, the actual... Um, health of the roof a little bit clearer. I can't see that, so it's hard for me to tell. It's also hard for me to tell uh, what the bathroom looks like. And a lot of times, if they're not showing it to you, it's a problem. Now, the bathroom looks like it's right back here, but I can't see it. The things I wanna see, guys, I wanna see the living spaces, the kitchen, the bathroom. That Those are the biggest things because we have a lot of expenses in bathrooms and kitchens, and, and I wanna see that stuff. So. Barring anything crazy going on in the bathroom, guys, we're looking at an extremely, extremely short rehab right here. But those are the kind of things I want you guys to look for. And of course, read all the descriptions to see, um, you know, what they have to say. You can learn a lot from reading the descriptions, all right? Now, just like anything else, guys, I could sit here and, and do this with you all day long, um, which which I I. I don't really want to do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I could do this with you guys all day long. Um, we'll do maybe one more. Maybe you guys want to do the multifamily. So let's do the multifamily. So it's a duplex. It's a five bedroom, two bathroom, 2,500 square feet. Okay. I don't like what I see immediately on the roof. I see some discoloration on the roof. That's a problem. When you buy in places like Akron, guys, you have to understand it's going to snow. Whenever it snows, um, you have to understand that we have to deal with that. So we're going to have to deal with snow melting. We're going to have to deal with ice dams on the roof. Not great, all right? If the roof is already in bad shape, it's going to need a repair sooner than later. Let's read the description. Okay, tenants pay separate and all utilities. That's good. That means that it has uh, metered um, all appliances stay. That is good. We're looking at... Um, Spacious, one bedroom, one bath in the first unit. Second unit has four bedrooms and one bath. Wow. All appliances stay. Tenants pay separate utilities. Now, in order for tenants to pay separate utilities legally, you need to have separate meters. So you need to have electrical meters uh, for both units that are separate. You need to have water meters for both units that are separate, gas meters for both units that are separate. That way you know exactly what the tenants are using, and that way you can bill them individually for that. Okay, so I see some rot in the wood right here. Again, guys, uh, it all comes down to water. It all comes down to water. I see rot here. Water is, is your worst enemy. It's your worst enemy, guys. You have to take care of water. It'll ruin your homes. Okay, let's look here. The side of the house looks pretty good. This side of the house looks pretty good. I'm trying to look for meters. It says the tenants pay utilities, and that's it. Wow, that's it. Don't like it, guys. Big red flag. Big red flag. Wow. Okay. Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Can't see any interior. That makes me very, very weary. And that should make you guys weary too. Let's do another quick one. 
This one's 80,000. It's a three bedroom. All right. Roof looks really good here. I see a window unit, meaning it probably doesn't have an HVAC system. Okay. Um, everything looks good here. And I just want to show you guys again, I know I'm slamming these roofs, but see how this roof looks really good. See right there how it's dark. That's because there's a leak in the gutter system. I need you guys to look for this stuff. This is the stuff I need you guys to see. So right away, we know that there is some water coming in right here. There's some water that is, uh, not proportionately coming off this roof. We have saturation. Saturation leads to rot. Rot leads to a new roof. Okay. Let's scroll down and see what we have here. Again, you can see it even more distinctly in this picture right here. That is bad. You have some rot here as well. We'd have to swap these out and make sure that these are sound. Don't see anything very concerning here. Uh, it's some ugly furniture. That's concerning. But nothing, uh, I'm just kidding, of course. But nothing very um, that's sticking out to me. The colors are pretty ugly. Uh, unless you like baby blue, I'm sorry. Um, we'd want to paint all this stuff white to make the room look bigger. The ceiling looks like it was repainted. Um, recently I'd take the ceiling fan out, put a new light fixture in there. Whoever painted this did a pretty poor job. As you can tell, it's all over this, uh, window frame. There's paint on the floor here and that hardwood does look pretty beat up. So I'd probably suggest putting new flooring in. I haven't seen anything else, but I would just guess it's not very healthy. Yeah, it's definitely not healthy. Look at all this. That's damage over time, okay? I would definitely suggest putting flooring down here, here in the living room. Oh, that's ugly there, guys. That's some rot in there. We'd probably rip this thing out, clean this whole thing up, put new sheetrock in here, and repaint this entire thing. Put all new flooring down here as well. It's just kind of gross. And then, guys, see where this floor meets this vinyl sheet flooring over here? It's just shoddy. You know, there should be a transition strip right here as we go from this hardwood to the, the linoleum to that vinyl sheet. So it'd be good to put a transition strip in here and, and um, make it look a lot better than it is. All right. And again, the more we see, the more we, we realize. So all this looks reframed. This is the back of what looks like a refrigerator. We'd have to reframe this entire thing in and, and sheetrock this. Okay, guys. The more you look, the more you find. So it looks to me like this right here is behind this big refrigerator. Could be wrong, but that's what it looks like. I don't know what else this could be. Um, what, is, what do we have here? We have some water damage. That's not very good. All right, that makes me think that we have some issues. Now, it could be old water damage, but we never know. We'd have to open, we have to pop this suspended ceiling up, get in there and see what's going on. Got some rot under here. We'd have to figure out why there's rot here, where it's coming from and address that. Flooring again, guys, looks terrible. We'd have to put all new flooring in here. All new flooring in here as well. All new flooring in here. Look at how bad that looks. My goodness. Whoever put that caulk around that window did a terrible job. And again, look at this. So there should be a 220 amp uh, outlet right here, guys, that feeds onto this unit. Instead, there isn't. So people are running a, uh, a an extension cord around here, which is most likely going to put too much stress on the electrical system that's in this room. That is a terrific, terrific no-no. We should run, what you would do is if we were doing this, of course, we'd carpet this, number one, repaint this disgustingness, put a new uh, light fixture in here, run a 220 amp outlet right here. That way, this um, window unit has everything it needs right here and it's safe. Don't know why there would be a light like that hanging over your bed, but you do what you got to do, right? Everyone's different. Uh, so different strokes for different folks. We would rip that out and uh, rip this light fixture out. All new flooring in here as well. Terrible caulk job around this as well too. And you guys can see again, we have an extension cord coming off of this window unit. God only knows where it's going. Um, 
this vanity is gross, rip this vanity out, put a new light fixture in here, make sure that there's a vent here as well. If there's no window, there might be a window behind that shower but can't tell. Put a new mirror up right here, probably replace that toilet, but otherwise the floor looks fine. This looks pretty good too, guys. Don't think we'll have any issues there. That's a bad roof on this back unit. That's not good. This is not a problem. We could reseal that. If it was on the foundation, it would be more of an issue, but uh, I don't see any problems with it here. And that's it, guys. So that's, that's what I got for you, okay? Please, anything else that stuck out that you think I might have missed or anything that you might look at, let me know. Drop them in the questions, comments below, and um, we'll see you next time. Adios.